Hi guys, on our previous episode on the squat series, we talked about the pelvis behavior and how do we brace effectively for a squat. By nature, the next thing we want to look at is basically the unracking and the starting position. But through the experience that I had with my athletes, I found out that the more important thing is to understand the bottom of the squat. How do I create the optimal, powerful, stable position at the bottom so that you are ready to drive the weight up. By understanding and finding out the most optimal bottom position, it can allow and facilitate in setting up better and knowing what, how you should start in a squat. I'm Clinton from Technic Matters and today I'm going to teach you what and how to find the most optimal bottom position of the squat to create that power and that stability. So finding that efficient bottom position takes quite a bit of time and effort and a lot of practice to do it. So whichever steps we are, we are showing you today will be a progression and you guys have to continue to work on it until you find that sweet spot. What we are trying to do is to get that stable position at the bottom. So obviously we want to make sure that we have a good balance on the center which is on the midfoot. Okay, so this is uh, one of the principles that you always have to make sure you are doing. Okay, but now I'm going to include a new principle. How do I get into that bottom position in such a way that I'm actually engaging and ready to engage the quads, the hamstrings and the glutes. One of the things that I always like to uh, tell my athletes and tell myself is when I'm at the bottom, am I in an optimal position ready to throttle? If you actually watch our previous video, we actually mentioned about, uh, I mentioned about the quads and the glutes as our main throttles and our hamstrings and glutes as our um, supports, our brakes and suspensions. So. What I like to always tell my athletes is how do I get into the position at the bottom in such a way that I'm ready to drive my quads and glutes. And obviously you need to maintain a good pelvis position and bracing. When we talk about the bottom position first, it is good because we'll, we will touch on a lot of other stuff as well. For example, the foot stance. Okay, So one rule of time on a foot stance is you want to uh, be in a position where you can create the elevator effect. The elevator effect is what JJ has mentioned in the previous video about, uh, about the squats, whether you are hip dominant or quad dominant. So in a squat, it's more like an elevator movement. You want the whole movement to be like an up and down motion instead of a lawn mower which is back and front. Okay, So when we check, when we talk about and figuring out the stance, we want to make sure that we are feeling like we are doing an elevator movement. Okay, So one general rule of thumb is your stance needs to be slightly just outside your hip. Okay, where your heels are just slightly outside your hip and then you're gonna try and work your way down. So the movement of the down should be like an elevator going from a top level to the down level. So there's no front and back, so you're going down. So squats is up and down motion. Okay, so if you are going down and up in a free range of motion, you want to pay attention to also engaging the core and making sure your hips are in the right position. And if you feel good, that is your stance. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about what if we close out our stance a little bit more. So as you can see in this illustration and video, I purposely bring my stance in as much as possible. So what happens is when I go down, I need to put a lot of effort in moving forward and backwards. So the forward lean will be increased. And as well, from that position, even though I'm strong to fire up my quads, I don't think I can feel a lot of glutes over there. So when I come up, uh, I lack the stabilizers, which is why I will drift uh, left and right as I come up. So this is not a very stable position. So likewise, I've seen some athletes doing a su super wide stance. So once again, the principle applies for a strong bottom position is if you are in that bottom position and you can feel that your throttles are ready to fire, which is your quads and glutes, um, you know, you can work on the stance that you want to work on. But in my opinion is if you are in a super wide stance, unless you are very strong uh, in the, uh, the hamstrings and the supporting muscles to keep yourself in position, that torso angle as you descend down is very hard for you to drive with your throttles, which is your quads and your glutes. What I strongly recommend, especially if you are a novice and you are still trying to figure out the squat movement pattern, is best to get that normal neutral stance, which is where your uh, heels is just outside your hips a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the toe positioning. So the toe positioning, where you angle the toe is very, very simple to find. All you need to do is to start from the front and then you work your way down. So as you squat down, 
you'll find that your biggest toe is coming off. So all you need to do is to slide yourself out a little bit and then stay in that bottom position if you feel stable. And same, once again, if you feel that your throttles, which is your quads and your glutes are ready to fire, uh, in that position, you are in a good uh, spot right there. Okay, so now that we have mentioned a little bit more about finding out your stance and toe positioning, uh, I want to remind you, the viewers out there once again, what we are trying to, to do. You want to set yourself in the bottom position where you are stable, number one, and number two, your quads and your glutes are ready to fire. And number three, obviously your stabilizers, which is your hamstrings or glutes, are supporting yourself at the bottom. So if you, um, if you can manage to get that position, then you are ready to go to the bar, okay? But before that, I have an exercise which I find it quite useful to find out how to get that movement pattern in into the bottom stable position. So what all you need to do is to get into your squat stance, okay? And then you bring your hands together and create a small little diamond shape or arrow shape. And then what you want to do is to try to flex your ankles and watch how your body lean forward downwards so you want to aim your fingers towards the center of your your midfoot there and then you work your way down so if you can go down in a motion of an up and down in a fluent motion this should be the movement pattern okay so this exercise that i've mentioned to you just previously is actually to help you understand how you should move to the bottom position okay so what can we see here so at the bottom position right in order to get there we want to pay attention to two things, which is how much you flex your ankles, the ankle flexion, and how much you lean forward, which is how much you bow, or some people like to say lean forward or sit back. All in all, we want to look at the angle. So how much lean angle and how much ankle flexion you want to create to get into that stable position, the up and down feeling motion, and ready to fire up your trotters at the bottom. Okay, so this is to understand that concept and that principle. When you squat high bar, low bar, front squat, judges squat, or whatever variation of squat involving a bar, your torso angle will definitely be different. So if your torso angle is different, obviously your ankle flexion will be different as well. So in this context, because of powerlifting, most people do low bar, I'm going to teach you and show you an example of how I calibrate myself so that I can allow myself to be a very strong position at the bottom when I rack with a low bar position, okay? So in this video, obviously, you can see that I'm racking myself in the low bar. I'm going to show you the correct way of squatting first. So what I'm doing is I'm going to get myself down by uh, flexing my ankles and lean accordingly because I understand the concept based uh, through the exercise previously. I want to maintain balance and feel like an up and down motion. So I get that feeling inside my mind and then I start going downwards. Okay, so when I'm down, uh, I should feel that I'm ready to throttle with my quads and my glutes to bring the weight up. Okay, so what I do, I will pause at the bottom first and then I will come up halfway. Okay, so it's like a three quarter uh, towards the finishing line. You're going to hold it there and hold for about five seconds. If you can feel that your legs are, your quads, especially the muscles around your knees are actually firing to stay yourself in that position then yes, you are in the right and optimal position at the bottom. So this should be, most probably should be your stance and the strongest position at the bottom, okay? So I'm going to give you some examples where uh, you may not feel right, okay? So um, this example is whereby I try to bring my knees forward, okay? So what happens is when I track my knees all the way forward, I try to max out my ankle flexion. So um, as you see, can see here, I'm wearing flats so that everything can be very consistent in terms of what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I'm trying to bring my knees forward as much as possible. So what happens is my heels start to come off. When my heels come off, um, I can feel that my bar weight is drifting towards the toes. So even though, okay, I can feel like my quads are working just fine and a lot. I don't think there's uh, much engagement on the glutes. So the trotters lack the glutes part and obviously I lost the balance really. Which is why when I come up, I, the bar will naturally drift backwards. So as a result, my hip will rise up. So if you have problems in your squat whereby your hips keep rising up, this could be one of the reasons you are tracking the bar, you're tracking your knees a bit too forward. Okay, so in this position it's not stable and obviously we do not want that to happen because what happens here is during the descent there's no the up and down motion is there but you're drifting yourself too forward. Okay, likewise this is an, another example uh, where I try to 
push my hips back all the way so I'm trying to max out as much as possible as much as my back can hold by sitting back as much as possible and then I'm minimizing the ankle flexion so what happens is I'm leaning and bowing forward a lot so there's a lot of sheer force on the back so if you are feeling you are someone when you're squatting and obviously if you're bracing right and you're squatting it yourself this way and you still feel that your lower back is in pain when you're squatting after after a while um, that could mean something that means that obviously you're leaning a bit too much and you could actually improve your lift by providing more ankle uh, doing more ankle flexion so that you can uh, get into a better position okay so once again if you are in that seat back position so much right when you come up right you will you lack the throttles which is the quads to drive the weight up only hip extension which is the glutes and hamstring so unless you are a super strong guy uh, with very thick back and strong back um, then you can pull off this kind of positioning and movement okay so once again what i've recommended to you is getting that balance position whereby when you're at the bottom your hamstrings are supporting yourself against the weight and you're ready ready to drive the weight up with your quads and glutes okay. All in all, I have taught you a couple of ways to figure out your stance, your toe angle and how do I create that movement pattern so that I'm going up and down so that I apply the principle that I've mentioned to you in this video. I'm going to mention it once again to end it off. So the principle is, in a squat, how do I get into a bottom position whereby the effect is more like the elevator motion and when I'm at the bottom, I'm stabilized by my stabilizers, which is my hamstring and glutes. And, then, and last but not least, in that position, am I ready and am I in a strong position to fire my quads and glutes, which, is the, which are the throttles to finish the work. Once again, this is yet another series, uh, episode for, to teach you and improve your squat. And I hope you like it. If you feel that this content is useful, please help us share this video to those in need. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube and be sure to check out our Instagram because we will update our news over there. Till then, I'll see you. Goodbye.